Hey there, everybody. What do you say? So, I thought we might uh, take a quick look at Case Blue again, because, uh, hey, I have the whole weekend. Uh, where were we? 26th of November, and it's the end of the movement phase for the Germans, and I thought this would be a good time, because a few things have happened here, to uh, share with you a little bit more about the logistics network and what's going on, and how that can uh, drive your behavior in the game and also drive your play in the game if you are awesome and plan well ahead or if you play like me and you're not quite so awesome and don't plan quite so far ahead. So <clears throat> let's see if we can uh, try and keep this uh, organized here. These blue uh, cubes represent either a uh, logistics point that is uh, the end of a rail line, a railhead, or they represent a uh, an extender, and that helps me just keep track of things uh, that, are, that are going on here. So up until last turn, I only had uh, one or two wagons. How many wagons are here? No, I had five wagons over here, transporting very slowly, transporting uh, supplies over to the forces in and around Rajev, which have now pressed up. <coughs> further north with the view of coming back down onto Kalinin. And so it was very difficult and uh, I've now uh, relieved four trucks from the south uh, from shipping duties and brought them over here and they are now trying to uh, boost this up a little bit because I want to make a press uh, as a German player on the, in the northern uh, Moscow area. So I brought a, uh, I converted some of these wagons into a, uh, an extender and previously I'd been using uh, HQ to uh, you know, throw forward so I could get in and around Rajiv, but that was really it. So that was, that was constricting my play there. Uh, <clears throat> and then if we look a little bit further down here, I'm gonna try and zoom in just a little bit. I've got it, I only drove the rail up to here. And, and that is because I, I knew that with an HQ uh, counting back five uh, truck MPs, I'd be okay and I can still reach fairly close to Moscow and, and if needs be I can always rail I can always move the railhead further up in the future. So that was what was going on here. And my plan was never really to make a head-on, front-on assault of Moscow, so I haven't really pressed very heavily here. And you can see I've started to thin the forces out here. But I do have two divisions, the 19th and the 14th motorized, uh, 19th Panzer, ready to uh, either support an assault this way, if we can find a slot through the road, or divert, and there's a little gap here which has been reinforced by First Guard from the Russians. Uh, I'd really like to try and hit that in conjunction with using 7th Panzer, and there's another division over here, I think 6th Panzer, and 1st in fact, so there'd be five divisions that I could bring in and around, sorry, in and around the Kalinin uh, let's pick a town, where's the town here? The Klin Kalinin region. Uh, fairly substantial, but a difficult uh, support area to help, to aid, to provide, to provision for. Uh, you know, Kaluga, <clears throat> we've still got a one holdout unit here. I think it's down to one, or there's one or two steps left in there. So that'll go this turn or the next turn. And if not, I'll actually spend the SP to kind of, to try and break them because uh, they, you know, one more, one more. If they defend, uh, they'll be exhausted, and then we'll be able to just uh, attack them piecemeal and, and break them up. Uh, anyway, so <clears throat> we we put a, a, a truck extender in here, and then did I do that? And then then I'm swapping it out to a wagon extender <clears throat> because. I now have moved this railhead up to here. This has freed up five trucks here. Uh, this has freed up five trucks for me. And uh, that's great because I, I moved the trucks from the south, from here, over to this way uh, to provide uh, support to the north. One of the problems in the game for me is that I've lost a lot of trucks through the, attri the attrition rolls and then through the uh, the, re the replacement rolls. I've actually lost, I think, three trucks, which has broken up <sighs> extenders and other bits and pieces on uh, numerous occasions. Right, so 
there's this. Now, that, this has led us to a situation where, in the bigger picture, this is going to take a little while. I may have to break this up into two videos. <coughs> uh, in the bigger picture, I've been bringing forces in from Tula, uh, so the 18th, and then from this direction, the 20th, the 10th, uh, the Tottenkopf, uh, Das Reich, and several other divisions in here. Third, uh, third motorized, third Panzer. Uh, tw I said 20th, didn't I? And uh, so you know, so a big swag of units. And we've pushed real hard this way, got lucky with the break. I tried to pop Tula so that I could get this road all the way through and have everyone supported simply by this unit here with a truck extender. I've got a wagon extender back here that I intend on using and then freeing these trucks up and they're gonna go somewhere else, which I'll point out in a second. So I wanted to, I wanted to give the Russians the impression that we were coming heavily this way and, pushed, and trying to push from the south of Moscow. And they have, you know, indeed reacted to that. Uh, and I, I break my play up often enough that, you know, I write these things down in terms of what my plan is. And then when I come back, I'm, I'm playing the Russian turn and I'm just doing the Russian turn. I'm not thinking about what I wrote down as the Soviet, as the German player. Suffice to say, you know, this would logically be what the, the Russians will be doing is trying to protect Moscow, right? Because that's the, they're, they're the victory conditions for 1941. However, when we look at the southern end of the map, you can see how sparse it is, right? There's not a whole lot here. Here's the Don River, there's Voronezh, and here's your let's give you some reference, and there's uh, Kursk here. So here's what I was thinking for, for these extenders, uh, and uh, so I need a little blue cube, actually, just to keep it all legit, right? I'm going to make this an extender right here. This guy's an extender, and it has supply. Great. Did I just pop that? That's the feel. All right, <clears throat> so so we've we've built this network that uh, that links back to Kursk, and uh, that and that all works just fine. I, I redid the counting last night. Had a couple of cocktails and thought I'd screwed it up, but actually it hadn't. So that was good. Uh, what I'm thinking of doing is taking these three, at least these three divisions, and diverting south along this uh, this primary road down here, and uh, you know with the accelerated movement rate and really try and put some pressure on this portion of the map and link up with all of these forces down here. I've got uh, 4th Panzer, 17th Panzer, 9th Panzer and 16th Motorized down here. Four divisions. If I brought three, four, or five more divisions here, I could push really heavily and aggressively and uh, start cleaning up this end of the map and perhaps encapsulate the entire enemy forces down towards Rostov, which is just down there. It's Rostov down there. And try and uh, you know, lock up this entire section and be ready, keeping off, keeping south of the Don River on the EATG maps. Um, I think that's right. Is that the Don? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to make sure I don't... Uh, Oh, you know what? Okay, I have to check that. I've got to check. There's, a, there's a, something that multiplies the uh, replacement rate for the, for the Germans. And uh, I may have... Uh, no, different river. Okay, uh, so anyway. So, lock all this up and be in position to drive deeply into the south in uh, the beginning of 1942, take Stalingrad, Sevastopol and the oil fields down there. I will have played my hand, obviously, by then, but uh, and the, the, the Soviets will know that that's where I'm coming from, but I think I'll have a, such a weight of force that we might be able to carry the day uh, early in 42, assuming I can crack the Sevastopol nut, which I have uh, really not put a lot of effort into this turn. Anyway, that's, what's, that's my thinking, that's what's going on. So these networks, so these road networks and rail networks really drive your movement, obviously. And uh, that is not a, that's a railhead right there. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, and here's, a, here's the other railhead. So I've got to finish up some, some rail, but I've been moving, this has been my primary focus here. And I just moved a rail 
a rail unit back over uh, to the west of Kursk to kind of link up to Bryansk so that we can have a double rail track all the way up to here. That'll, that'll aid us enormously and then we can continue, uh, continue on with uh, 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 working out a way to feed from Kharkov along here somewhere and have a rail line that will uh, support us. So it's an interesting little exercise. I probably should have thought about this more fully when I began. I know that I've had to deploy more extenders than most people normally do, and that's curtailed my ability to fight a lot. And I think that's been good, because I've had good force preservation, uh, losing more to frostbite than anything else. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao.